Hey guys, what's up? What's good? How you doing? Today I want to talk to you real quick about something powerful that God really revealed to me in my devotion the other day that I just had to share. And so there's this book called The Desire of Ages that I'm reading simultaneously with the book of John in the Bible. That's just powerful. You know, I've actually read this book before, but it actually is a very good book that I recommend all to read. And so there's this principle called the principle of the first mentions. And what this is, is in the book of Revelation, chapter 19, and verse 13, Jesus Christ is called the word of God also in John chapter 1 now also in the book of Revelation chapter 1 Jesus Christ is called the Alpha the Omega the beginning and the end the first and the last and so Jesus being called both the word of God and the first and last the principle of the first mentions is okay is there anything that I can learn based upon the first time that a word is mentioned in the Bible or the first time that a word or a concept is introduced in sort of the timeline of the history of the Bible. And so, you know, hopefully that makes sense. Probably doesn't make sense. So I'm going to give you an example. Okay. Take for example, sin. When was the first time that sin was literally mentioned in the Bible? And then when was the first time that sin was introduced in the timeline of the universe? Make sense? So for example, in the book of Isaiah chapter 14, Ezekiel 28 and Revelation 12, those are the chapters that really deal with the first time that sin begins to be introduced into the universe. Now, the principle would go like, okay, based upon those verses or those chapters, could we learn anything about sin? It seems kind of obvious, right? Okay, now, it's powerful because when we study it like that or that way, we find in the book of Isaiah chapter 14 something interesting about sin. And that was when Satan really, Lucifer as he was called back then, when sin really began to boil up in his heart, he said, something the Bible says in Isaiah 14 verses 12, 13 and onward. It says literally, Satan says, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit in the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. And so five eyes, we literally see that this guy says, I, 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 I. And so noticing something about sin is powerful because man, sin really is an eye problem. I, I, me, me. Sin really is a self problem. We see that the root of sin is selfishness. And it's powerful because the first time we see sin, that's exactly what we see. It goes even deeper because love now, in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 13, the Bible says that love seeketh not her own. And from that we learn that love is selfless. I seen this one, you know, little post that used to hang in my, my bathroom that said, love isn't love until it's given away. You know, and it's just a powerful point to think about the fact that, man, true love is selflessness. True love is being self-sacrificing. And so if true love is self-sacrificing and sin is selfishness, then sin really is just the opposite of love. And so God is a God of love. Sin really is just the opposite of God. And it's powerful because sin being selflessness, we see that God literally in that act gave as a selfless gift his son and Christ literally in that act you know though he could have you know said no and stayed in heaven and be like yo I'm chilling up here with the with angels worshiping me what up he's like nah I will be selfless and so based upon the principle of sin we see that whoever harbors sin primarily principally being Satan wouldn't have died for us why because sin is selfish. And so it's powerful because, man, the book of Philippians 2 talks about that. That it was necessary for Christ to be selfless. Though he was equal with God, he had to humble himself and become less than God, like a man, to save man. But Satan is not concerned with becoming less than God. Satan is so concerned, as Isaiah 14 says, with being equal with God. And so we see that for mankind to be redeemed, to be saved, somebody has to come and degrade themselves. God has to come and degrade himself to die for us. While Satan is not concerned with that, he's just concerned about himself. And so principally we see that Satan would have never died for us.